Hello everyone. People often talk about the first few lines of a play as setting the scene for what will follow. The same could be applied to the ministry of Jesus. His opening words are, The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. This sets the scene for what is to come. His mission was to usher in the kingdom of God, but if we were to be part of it, ongoing repentance needs to be high up on our agenda. There are only two types of people in the gospel, the contrite of heart, like say Zacchaeus or Mary Magdalene, and the unrepentant, who hardened their hearts against Jesus and had him crucified. Now, repentance is something we could easily put on the back burner. For Catholics, it is normally followed by a confession of sins to a priest in private confession. This is mandatory for serious sins, but we must prepare for this moment by a detailed analysis of the way we live our lives against the backdrop of the commandments and the gospel and church teaching. Repentance affects the core of our being. It is how we understand reality, whether we view others as objects to be used or people to be loved. It involves seeing everyone as our brothers or sisters in Christ and, if need be, to change our approaches towards certain people. It involves following Jesus faithfully, not just as fair-weather friends, but also when our faith in God is stretched or tested. Repentance means putting aside sin, cynicism, which is a sort of unacknowledged atheism. It's calling a sin a sin and not camouflaging it or muddling the water for our own convenience. Like we said two Sundays ago, real conversion of heart will mean that in making moral decisions, we will have recourse to objective moral standards as outlined in scripture and taught in the catechism, and not Act merely on personal feelings or the advice of people with limited knowledge of our Catholic beliefs and many moral issues. The first apostles didn't know what they were letting themselves in for when they left their nets to follow Jesus. The question is, what do we need to let go of in order to become more ardent followers of his? Unlike evangelical Christians, we believe repentance, who believe that repentance is a one-off born-again experience, we Catholics, we're much more realistic and we believe that it is ongoing all through life. Some people will try putting us off listening to God or our conscience. The tempter, for instance, told Adam and Eve that if they eat the forbidden fruit, they will not die, but on the contrary, become God's equal, knowing good and evil. They swallowed the bait, and they were banished from paradise. When our friends tell us that something which used to be a sin is not a sin anymore, in our naivety we may be persuaded to believe them. Of course they are playing the tempter's game, and repentance is not part of his agenda. Our Lord says that we must be wise as serpents and simple as doves. Only the contrite of heart will enter his kingdom. Ongoing repentance is good for us, good for our families and indeed good for society at large. Without it, our following of Jesus is hardly going anywhere. Now, here are a few questions you could consider. First, Jesus had friends, but he also had detractors. What caused so many people to reject Jesus and his message? Second, why is repentance an uphill struggle for so many people? Why do so many people, for instance, stay away from confession? Third, the parable of the prodigal son brings out the unbounded mercy of God, the father, towards his wayward son. Why do you think the elder brother of the prodigal was so angry, considering that everything the father owned would one day be his? Thank you all for listening, and God bless you all.